How's it going? Spill the handyman up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? Today we're looking at Kirkland. Basically, it's a Whirlpool machine. Kirkland. Sold by Costco. And what this does, it will run for a little while then quit. So that indicates to me it's got a weak motor. What we're going to do is lube the bushings and bring a little life back into it. Let's listen to it here real quick. First thing, you always want to check your vent. That vent looks pretty good. Now if we go outside, we can see the vent is clear. No barbecues, no yard tools or anything blocking that. Okay, so let's take a listen here. Take the lens. Looks good there. Yeah, so it's not wanting to come on. It's not wanting to come on at all. Yeah, it's got a problem. Definitely got a problem. Definitely got a problem. So, this one's got a whole different scenario than what was originally told to me. So, it is possible that it has a bad uh, fuse in it. So, we're going to check a couple things here. Oh, there it is. door switch okay so this one's a mystery at this point we're just gonna have to take it apart and look at it see what happens oh, okay so here it is all apart got your basket out and let's check the motor real quick so it's a little linty but not too bad so first thing I like to do is check all the action basically talking about make sure these things are roll rolling good not stiff or anything make sure the idler's good make sure the motor's good now this motor I was thinking this motor was going to be tight but it's not tight and we don't have slop back and forth We've got a little bit but not too much so at this point I'm thinking we might have a problem with the timer something up in the timer console so what I'm going to do is I've done this on my other videos and I'm going to basically chip chip the uh, whole machine and then I'm going to weep the oil into the, the bushings and so sometimes I take these uh, these bushing caps off to do that sometimes uh, I just uh, weep the oil in on through the shaft and bring it a little bit of life back into it I'm a little concerned about this I really don't think it needs it because this motor is pretty free and it's not much slop in it and so we'll just do it and then try it and see what okay, happens. Okay, so here's what I do. Usually I'll take the bearing cap loose there, pry it back, and get in here with the oiler. And then I'll tip tip the machine backwards so the oil goes back into that that bushing. There's actually felt in there. I, felt is normally moved at the factory. Um, so that felt will absorb the oil and help the engine run longer. So that felt right inside that bearing cap. We're just going to soak that with oil and hope for the best. Ideally, you want to take the whole motor off and soak the back bearing cap because there's another bearing cap on the back. But what I did uh, on this one is I just tilted the machine backwards and let it drip down in there. I also let it drip down on the inner part of that uh, front bushing too. And so I'm going to put it back together and then watch it and then I may have to rebuild the timer. And okay, sure. so I didn't uh, didn't find that the motor was stiff and so I'm thinking it needs to have this timer rebuilt. Basically what I would do is I'd push the button and then sort of turn the dial around to see if I could get it to work. And it went through this phase where I couldn't get it to do anything. Let's see if it's going to work here. And there's this. So it's... Unfortunately, this door switch here is not working. They should get a door switch because if, the, if your door switch is sloppy like this one, you don't hear any clicks. It's basically stuck on the on position. This little tab should click. You don't have that fixed and it's stuck on, then you're going to be taking it out on your timer, basically. Um, so that switch should be fixed, and the timer probably has to be rebuilt. Let's try it on the fluff. 
So it's working now. So we open the door, it doesn't shut off. That's how I know that switch is bad. And so, and then contrary, if this switch is bad, sometimes it would not come on. So if you check here, you don't have any action, your dryer doesn't come on, it could be the switch. Okay, let's check all settings here. So it's, it's doing it now. It's working fine at this point. If we look back here, I'm gonna pull this timer apart and check it anyway, just for the heck of it. You don't see any burnt wires. Um, we hit, we got, I can feel the heat, so it's definitely heating. Some of these actually had problematic on-off switches. I don't believe it was this, I believe it was the Kenmore models that had that, but I don't think this is the problem. Again, what I did basically, um, when I checked this, I, uh, I would, uh, I would both, uh, you know, jiggle the knob, turn the, turn the, uh, or jiggle the timer knob, and then push the on button, and until it basically came on, uh, I held, I held the on button and turned this around, and it came on. So there's a little okay, problem. Okay, so with that here's this timer. Look at the cog. The cog is not burnt up. There's no melted marks on or anything. And if we look inside here, and we can look for burnt points. Now you can see there's some burnt points right in here. Right off the bat, we can see these points here on this side. Those are kind of burnt. And so far, the other ones look fairly good, but I'm going to touch them up. Basically, what I'll do is take some fine grit sandpaper and clean those up and then I'll push the tolerances in a little bit so basically I'll, I'll tweak them just a little bit so that they, they they're bent a little bit more so they got a little bit more life on them and so that's what I'm going to do and hopefully that will solve the problem we always want to lube this shaft here we lube that shaft a little bit so that that uh, doesn't tend to put wear and tear on the cog and it uh, puts the wear and tear on the main uh, steel shaft and so there's a disclaimer for you. If you need any help, you can contact me, 707-443-8347, 707-443-8347. I give phone advice for $25. I also rebuild timers normally for about $35. Some timers, they're actually too far gone. They're like melted inside, and I really can't do anything with those. But some of them that are dirty, uh, corroded points that have uh, Y tolerances, I can mess and fix and uh, get going again. So, yeah. And email Z underscore fixitman at yahoo.com. Okay, so here's this timer. Look at the cog. The cog is not burnt up. There's no melted marks on it or anything. And if we look inside here, and we can look for burnt points. Now, you can see there's some burnt points right in here. Right off the bat, we can see these points here on this side. Those are kind of burnt. And so far, the other ones look fairly good, but I'm going to touch them up. Basically, what I'll do is take some fine grit sandpaper and clean those up. And then I'll push the tolerances in a little bit. So basically, I'll, I'll tweak them just a little bit so that they, they, they're bent a little bit more, so they got a little bit more life on them. And so that's what I'm going to do. And hopefully that will solve the problem. We always want to lube this shaft here. We lube that shaft a little bit so that that uh, doesn't tend to put wear and tear on the cog and it uh, puts the wear and tear on the main uh, steel shaft. And so there's a disclaimer for you. If you need any help, you can contact me, 707-443-8347, 707-443-8347. I give phone advice for $25. I also rebuild timers normally for about $35. Some timers, they're actually too far gone. They're like melted inside and I really can't do anything with those. But some of them that are dirty, uh, corroded points that have uh, Y tolerances, I can mess and fix and uh, get going again. So yeah, and email Z underscore fix it man at yahoo.com. I don't see any heat fatigue on this. Could possibly be on that inside there. There could be a loose connection. But I'm going to clean this up and bend it and try and see what happens. And then, if nothing else, we'll have to open that up and take a look at that and see how bad that thing looks. Okay, so basically, I push the on button and jiggle the cord. And that's how I found out what the problem was. So 
So now I've already cleaned the cord. I've cleaned the, I had some 220 grit sandpaper and I cleaned it, the ends of the uh, plug there, the cord. Um, and when I turn it on, it comes on. And when I jiggle that, when it's on, it doesn't shut off. So that's how I know that that is solved right now. I bent the uh, terminals on that plug just a little bit to uh, have a little bite when it goes into that socket. Um, ideally, that socket should be replaced, socket or receptacle. Um, and so this one should be good to go. It seems to work on all the settings and everything. And when I jiggle the cord, it don't shut off, so that's good.